One way to avoid this, I'm gonna give you the setup, is when you're shooting in the studio and you do not want color contamination from your overhead lights or your windows, you're gonna to wanna to shoot at or near your sync speed. So all of our cameras have a maximum shutter speed where it can still talk to the strobes and work before you start seeing the curtains. For mine, for example, it's one two hundredth of a second. Um, I shoot a Canon 5D Mark III. Even at one two hundredth of a second, I start to see like the corner of the, um, of the shutter. So I usually shoot at one, one sixtieth of a second. Um, another thing that you wanna do is try to turn off the, the ambient light if you can. Go ahead and turn off um, the tungstens overhead or close the curtains from the windows. Try to get rid of anything that's going to be affecting the tones in your pictures. And then the next thing that you wanna do is when you go to shoot, make sure you take off your trigger, you've got your camera all set to what you think your exposure is going to be for the studio strobe, and take a picture. You should see nothing. When you're shooting in the studio and you take a picture with your studio strobes and then you take that off, if you take a picture without the strobes and you still see that person, what it means is that the ambient light in the room is recording, whether it's the window or the tungsten or the fluorescence. And that color that's recording is messing up your skin tones. I have no doubt. And it's going to show up most predominantly in the shadows. But the shadows, it doesn't mean you have to have a dramatically lit picture. It can be the shadows under the chin or the shadows in their eye sockets. So my problem used to be is I would, even if it wasn't that dramatic, I'd have light on a subject's face and maybe they had deeper set eyes and they'd have like green in their eyes and green underneath their chin because the fluorescent light was registering there. So what I came to find out is I'd get my settings all right with my strobe, I'd take off that trigger, I'd take a picture and make sure no light was recording. So I'm gonna show you what that actually looks like, how you might do a test like that. All right, so I made a really extreme example here, um, but it's not, like I actually put a tungsten hot light on this side um, this is going to be, let's say that I had a lamp sitting there. But quite honestly, a big bank of windows is enough light to mess up your color for sure. Um, so it's, it's kind of just simulating another light source. All right, so this is my beauty dish. It's going to be the daylight strobe. Here's me shooting. I'm using the D1 Airs. All right. So I went ahead and I took the trigger off of my camera. And I shot at my sync speed, 1 200th of a second, F8 ISO 100. I am quite sure that many of you shoot in the studio at settings close to this, right? Like those aren't outrageous. It's not like I'm shooting a really long shutter speed or shooting wide open or really high ISO. And I can still see her, but it's not too bad. But what happens if I go to a 60th or a 30th? I can see a full complete image. So when I go ahead and I turn my strobes back on, at a 200th of a second, uh, maybe I can see a little bit, but with these strobes, when I have those longer shutter speeds, I absolutely see the color from the ambient light. Um, for those of you who aren't familiar with mixing ambient and studio at the same time, um, your shutter speed determines how much ambient you see. The longer your shutter stays open, the more you're recording of the ambient light. A long shutter speed isn't going to affect your studio strobe if you're just trying to shoot studio. So that's why I recommend go ahead and shoot close to your sync speed and take a test image because although this one is kind of uh, orangish looking, mine was green and this is definitely not an attractive undertone. And this even happens when you're not shooting at you know, really, really long exposures or really high ISOs. So give that a test for sure. So let me take a look one more time. Here's at a 60th which I was shooting at a 60th all the time. I had no idea. Mm -hmm. And 1 200th. Um, let's say, however, you're going ahead and you're like, well, I've, turned, I've tried to close the windows as much as possible. I'm shooting at my sync speed and I can definitely still see that ambient light. What do you do? What you can do at that point is you start making sure you're at your sync speed. You wanna close down your aperture more because that'll darken everything too, but then your strobe's gonna look darker, so you've gotta turn up the power of your flash. So if you're seeing your ambient, turn your strobe up higher, basically. Just make it stronger, and that's gonna help you out. 